Martha DeGrasse for RCR Wireless News, and I'm here with Todd Landry. He is Corporate Vice President of Product and Market Strategy at JMA Wireless. Todd, it's great to see you again. Good to see you, Martha. So your announcement today here at the PCIA Wireless Infrastructure Show is CDAS. Tell us what that is. Yeah, CDAS. So uh, the C, often known as cloud or centralized, is really focused on bringing the head end of the DAS gear off the core premise or out of the venue that you would typically deploy in. So in today's market, we, we think of DAS deployments on almost a venue by venue basis, which means you need to have a lot of BTS ho hotel head end gear in there. So what CDAS does is it really brings that head end off premise. It allows you to use lower cost facilities and it allows you to distribute that technology out to multiple venues. Once you distribute it out to multiple venues, you can do some cool things. So one head end for multiple DAS in multiple venues in an area. How big of an area are we talking about? Well, Typically what's happening is these are kind of metro serving areas. So let's say you have a stadium, an arena, uh, some business offices. Um, all of them used at kind of different times of the day and different times right. of the week, right? Uh, so you can, you can scale it up and down pretty infinitely depending on what you want to do. Okay, great. And how long do you think until this is ready to be deployed? So the CDAS architecture is available today. Uh, we've also introduced today, or announced today, uh, the forthcoming of our capacity management cards for the Teco system. Uh, what that'll do is allow you, from that CDAS head end, to take certain sector capacity and decide how to move that around within that metro area. So let's say that I have um, a, a, a weekend game in a stadium and I need uh, 15 sectors in a part of that stadium. I can move all those sectors into the stadium on the Sunday football game, but on Monday business day, I can reuse some of those sectors up in the business offices. So that technology is going to be available in the market in June. In June, okay. And is this a dynamic thing, or is it an individual monitoring it and allocating? It's a scheduled thing. So it all can be configured from our web-based uh, operations and management tool. Uh, what it allows you to do is look at the configurations and orchestrate uh, the calendar within a metro area to move that capacity around. Okay, and you keep talking about metro areas, and I know that you've talked to us before about, about metro DAS, DAS that is meant to serve an area but then also moves out into the surrounding city or right. part of it. So tell yeah. us a little bit about how that works. Well, and, and what we see really happening in, in the market now is people are beginning to look at multiple facilities in an area and the, the outdoor areas. So even for the Super Bowl coming up next year, we're working to um, service not only the stadium uh, in, in Santa Clara, but the parking lot and the Santa Clara area from one system. So you can really control the energy and the performance you can deliver to the users on the indoor and outdoor scenario from a single system. Uh, same is happening with the campus environment, right? We were with a lot of the higher education last week, and really what's happening on the campuses is they're, they're finally really looking at it not just as their stadium or their arena, they're looking at it at the campus view and how they can leverage that capacity across the campus. So it kind of becomes a, a campus DAS type solution or a metro DAS type solution. And I'm guessing that those campuses are stepping up to pay for more and more of the cost of their systems as they recognize that value? Yeah, we've seen a number of large universities start to say, look, this is, this is important for us. We're going to learn about it. We're going to understand it. We're going to um, bring people in to help us orchestrate a design for the entire campus. Uh, we're going to take more of an ownership in it, including the funding model. Uh, and it's been an ongoing debate for many years of who pays for that coverage within within a campus, but I think we're seeing the univer larger universities uh, step it up and start to say, I think I'm going to fund some of this because it really matters for my university offering. Right, and I bet you're seeing that in some other industries as well. Yeah, I think we are. Uh, we Earlier this year we joined uh, an industrial conference and uh, as you can imagine, with the influx of Internet of Things type uh, uh, wireless devices coming in the industrial sector, they're looking at saying, well, how do I guarantee capacity because these controllers and, and workflow monitoring tools that all have built-in LTE modems uh, need to have coverage to make them work. So they're saying, i got to build into my whole plan for IT coverage as well as the workflow devices that are IoT devices. Right. All right, before we finish, getting back to the CDAS, can you just give us a little bit of information about how that works in a neutral host environment? Is anything different when you've got lots of carriers in the DAS? It can work in a, a neutral host or a single carrier environment. Mm -hmm. um, what it uh, does is uh, you can centralize the head ends, 
uh, in one or more locations. So okay. one of the unique benefits is that I can have multiple carriers converge at a single head end and then use a single fiber to go out to individual venues okay. and then service those venues. The other thing we can do with it is I can have individual operator locations. So I can have two different head end locations, one for each carrier, and we can converge those at the venue. So it provides some flexibility on how you might deploy. Single carrier as a lead and then bring in a secondary carrier to, secondary carrier to the venue or a neutral host who wants to centralize operations and then start to service venues with multiple operators in that particular metro area. Fascinating. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on it. Todd Landry, awesome. JMA Wireless, thank you.